Welcome to this episode of the Wireless Weekly, part of the LTG Network. This is episode 40, back and we are ready to go. And I'm here this evening with Radford Castro. The show is brought to you by audible.com. Get your free audiobook trial at audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. Also by dine.com. Uptime is the bottom line. If you need if you're in need of extremely fast as well as reliable DNS service, then look no further than Dine.com. Thank you for being sponsors of the Wires Weekly. Like I said, my name is Tony Hannity, and Rad, how are you doing tonight? Good, and yourself? Good, man. Very, very good. Um, I know we have a lot of stuff to talk about, so let's, uh, before we get in, into that, let's go ahead and tell our listeners and viewers how to get a hold of us. You can always call us at 707-722-5299 or email us at comments at lazytecheyes.com. So, and we always appreciate those emails. And as always, we are live here at our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash lazytechtv. So the top headlines for tonight, uh, there's a lot of BlackBerry. BlackBerry's back. And uh, so we're going to be talking about BlackBerry 10, some of the handsets, uh, and the big change that happened as a company and how their stock's doing. Also, I'm going to be talking about a couple of devices from Samsung as well as a device from LG. So before we go ahead and do that, though, uh, let's go ahead and go back and uh, thank one of our sponsors, like I said in the beginning, which is audible.com. So one thing about Audible is they're actually doing a really cool offer right now. They're offering you guys a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. They have over 100,000 books on the service, so you'll definitely find something that you like. And it works on multiple devices like your computer, mobile devices like Android, iOS, and even Windows Phone. So to download your free audiobook today, which is about $30 to $40 value, go to audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. You should actually see it right there on the screen if you're watching. But again, just so you're, if you're listening, it's audibletrial, one word, dot com forward slash lazy for your free audiobook. And we thank them for being sponsors of the Wireless Weekly. So first and foremost, like I said, BlackBerry's back. And it's uh, good to see that they are uh, back in action, so to speak. So we're going to go over to uh, Rad, who I, I think you and Rad, you and I have been, you know, somewhat BlackBerry fans. We're BlackBerry, yeah. BlackBerry buddies when BlackBerry was the king, but now it's kind of, uh, you know, faded, obviously. But uh, what did BlackBerry or like, what did Rim, aka BlackBerry, aka BlackBerry, have to uh, have to announce uh, last week? So. Uh uh, research in Motion, what we know now as BlackBerry, has unveiled two BlackBerry 10 models, uh, the BlackBerry Q10 and the BlackBerry Z10. And basically, these two models differentiate by one using a keyboard and the one using a full touch screen. Uh, as you know, the, uh, as you've known in the past, BlackBerry has also used type, uh, gesture type uh, use cases uh, similar to the BlackBerry Playbook in which uh, users can swipe left and right and from behind, from under the uh, touch screen to provide different types of, I guess, um, frequent, um, I would say, features, feature sets like accessing email, accessing messaging, and things of that nature. Uh, so it's been, as they said from the blog manager of BlackBerry, a spirited journey and a fantastic build to launch. And so when Thorsten Hines introduced the first BlackBerry Z10, it's the, basically that is the, ten, that is the touch screen handset and this is something that a lot of enthusiasts have been looking forward to, at least the BlackBerry enthusiasts. And then you have the Q10, which is basically the uh, keyboard version, which makes also use of a touch screen. Um, but yeah, so if you're a physical fan of the QWERTY device experience, definitely the Q10 is up your alley. Uh, Donnie H also uh, groomed the QWERTY device as having a long-lasting battery, fast browser, rich media experience, and all thanks to the BlackBerry 10 OS. Um, and of course, as you've heard in previous news, um, BlackBerry also, also had uh, several thousand submissions of new applications that were going into BlackBerry. And I, it's it's on topic, but off topic. Did you see BlackBerry's latest ad from the Super Bowl? I did. It's actually it was a really well done ad. I thought. I yeah. mean, um, it, it really brought to light that you know they're not playing they're they're, they're not playing games now. They're playing for keeps. Yeah, and they they definitely have a phone that they can be very proud of, because uh, the last couple of phones that they churned out were kind of like, well, 
we have these extra ideas on the chopping on, on the chopping block floor. We have some money. Let's see if we can some, some let's see if we can actually do some turnaround. And obviously they they didn't. So the Q10, the Q uh, the, the Q10 and the Z10 are very very exciting. Um, in regards to the the carriers that are getting it um, worldwide, we can't really name every single one of them. But since we are here in the United States, who's getting it here? We got AT and T, Sprint, T-Mobile, and Verizon on that list, and although there were kind of scant details on the on the pricing for each of those carriers, uh, Verizon announced that it would offer both BlackBerry Q10 and the Z10. Uh, likewise, uh, AT&T also are, are going to support both of them. As for Sprint, uh, they're going to be doing the Q10, and T-Mobile will be doing the Z10. Uh, but again, they're not disclosing the price, the pricing models, or the type of contract that they will be including with it, but uh, both carriers revealed, and both I'm referring to are Sprint and T-Mobile, they're going to be uh, have uh, 4G LTE on those chosen handsets. So, um, but yeah, it's it's pretty, uh, I mean, they're pretty much going across the board in terms of trying to get as much as they can uh, regarding, um, you know, I guess uh, starting a base with BlackBerry 10. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this all turns out. And if you go to lazytechguys.com and look at this article that we have here, we have sign-up uh, URLs for each of the carriers here in the States if you want to get some more information. Mm -hmm. Now, Rad, I, I don't know if you knew about what I'm about to ask you, but there were there was a way that you could build or that you could kind of flip Android apps that were built on Gingerbread and put them on BlackBerry 10. Very and, familiar. Mm -hmm. And now they recently promised, or they are, or they already have updated it to support Jelly Bean. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, as a developer yourself, and you've developed for Android, um, maybe you've dabbled in some of the stuff that BB10 done, but do you think that that's going to be a huge benefit that that more developers are going to uh, out you know outstretch their arm to BlackBerry and say, oh, well, since you're doing that, then I have no reason not to develop for you. Yeah, that's a very interesting point. That's a very, very, very interesting point. Again, of course, uh, um, I, I've looked into this pretty deeply, and one of the things that stuck out and is when I'm reading the BlackBerry 10 uh, reviews, a lot of the reviewers who've experienced some of the applications that were running some of these so-called Android apps were using called BlackBerry wrappers. So the wrappers would wrap around the, uh, the Android applications, but uh, the application basically is it's basically like firing up an emulator. So you are actually dealing with the Android ecosystem and almost essentially turning your BlackBerry 10, your you know a Z10 into a an Android device. And the way it, the way they made it work is that you have an Android app that's going in there, but of course when you're emulating it, you're running the CPU that <laughs> emulates the CPU of another Android device, and the experience is going to be different. Yeah. So it's not going to be as ideal as say a native native device running on. Right. On an Android device, so it's um, there's a lot of breakage on there. <laughs> At so least it's, from what I'm reading, yeah. So it's still you're, we're we're still having that kind of breakage where because it's an emulation on top of BlackBerry 10 and it's not native to it, mm -hmm. we we shouldn't expect to see um, like Shadow Force or something like Correct. that. Correct. Yeah. So like okay. things like Shadow Gun or it's Temple Shadow Run. Yeah. yeah. I mean those kinds of those kinds of like uh, CPU intensive games will probably you know, take a back seat. You know, mm. when you're kind of emulating it. I, I gotta, is, isn't Shadow Shadow Gun on the playbook? Or am I mistaken? It is. It is also okay. on the playbook. Right. Okay, so you could just get a native on BlackBerry. <laughs> Don't even bother <laughs> with Android. But other games, like you said, Temple Run's a good example. Um, you know, some of the other games, uh, EA, for example, they they mm -hmm. made some games that maybe aren't yeah. on BlackBerry yet. So yeah, Dead Space. Yeah, yeah uh, that, that too. So those kinds of uh, experiences. Edge. Yeah, it's Mirror's Edge. Those are the games that are currently on the playbook, and uh, EA's is actually promised to build for the BlackBerry device. Oh, good. Uh, so, good. Yeah, so just a couple of these other guys are kind of experimenting, and you know they're they're ready to port some of that stuff over. And of course, you have Game Loft, which is kind of really across the board when they yeah. do that sort of thing. Um, but uh, I guess the the bigger, of course, like you're pointing out earlier, is it the worth building since I don't have to really build for QNX, I don't have to really build for B10. You know, what's the point? Well, I guess the big point would be is, uh, you know, uh, native coding and 
course, the, the ability to take advantage of all the multitasking that's on there. So, okay. Uh, but yeah, it's a very interesting question, though. Very, I think that's something definitely developers would like to answer. Well, I think it would be a good thing. Like, let's say there is a really popular app on Android, whatever it is. Doesn't matter if it's a game or a productivity app, and somebody, you know, not port but emulates it on BlackBerry, mm-hmm. and they're seeing that. Well, a lot of people are using it on BlackBerry, but I'm only getting three stars because it doesn't support this and it doesn't support that. Maybe if I invest X amount more dollars and money and time and stuff, and actually put it into the app world or what it's called app world now I think right mm-hmm. um, the app world that I would actually benefit from this wholeheartedly and maybe developers will slowly but surely stop putting Blackberry on the back burner as a developing agent but actually put it right in the mid um, with like iOS and Android yeah you know it's really interesting that you brought that up because I think it was probably you that sent me an email about a particular app called Polar Bear which mm-hmm. was you know, develop for BlackBerry first and having right. everyone else afterward, which was yeah. very interesting. Yeah, we're going to talk about so, that later, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, and so that to me was, you know, kind of encouraging uh, at the same time still, you know, me as a, I'm not, I mean, I'm a mobile developer, I haven't developed anything yet, but uh, just looking at it, it just seems that it's, uh, you know, uh, it'll be kind of interesting to see how that will pan out, you know, over time. Yeah. But, um yeah, the handsets are not. The handsets are already been reviewed, which is so crazy interesting, right now. And, but yeah, yeah, I can't wait to get my hands on one to like actually see. Because I had the Storm, and when the Storm first came out, it was the best, awesomest phone for maybe three weeks. And then that's when you started seeing. Oh, it's not as snappy as it was when I first got it out of the box, and then. Two months went by. I was like, wow, maybe BlackBerry didn't really have the iPhone killer that they were promising. Mm-hmm. And then their their whole name went downhill from there. From what I'm seeing here, even with the Q10, with the keyboard and everything, like people are, I wouldn't say that they're raving about it, but it's good reception. It's a good reception. Like analysts are like, oh, okay, good. You know, that it, it's it, it's good to see that you, you've turned a leaf in whatever department that you needed to turn a leaf in to actually present and create um, a meaningful and beneficial product, and and hopefully the public, the general public, and corporate corporations are going to uh, be as uh, amicable to the to the uh, new uh, dev- to the new devices as we are. So, mm-hmm. um, talking about change, BlackBerry changed their name from RIM to BlackBerry. I mean, they are now BlackBerry makes BlackBerry and BlackBerry. Mm-hmm. Um, that, according to Thorsten Hines, this whole thing was you know one brand, one promise, one name, no confusion. You know, I, I, I guess that's kind of like what, what Sony tried to do. You know, like trying to you know, when they dropped. That was a little different. They dropped Sony Ericsson. And just now they're just Sony, and they make right. phones now. Mm-hmm. But the Sony phones are really good. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's because Ericsson just had very bad design um, ideas. But now there's BlackBerry, and they even went to the lengths of changing their whole building to just show the BlackBerry logo on the side of the building. There's the there's the crane at the bottom there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, do, do you think that this is going to have a positive impact as a workforce, or do you think that people are going to be like, eh, it's a name change. I don't really care. Like when I worked for a big company, it went from AT&T to singular to right. AT&T wireless right. to something. It's like I don't even really mind at this point. So um, oh, we just have uh, VJ Bogna join us. Uh, how you doing, VJ? Hey, what's up? So we're just talking about uh, BlackBerry and their whole new name that they have. So they're no longer research in motion. And so uh, they're not they're not no longer motioning toward anything. They're just they're just BlackBerry. But um, aside from changing their name, though, it wasn't all um, happy times. It, it looks like they had a little bit of a, a drop in their shares by ten percent. Is that right, Brad? Yeah. So the after everything went out and um, the their, their shares dropped about ten percent. Um, after launch, and basically, uh, it slid all the way down to a share of fourteen dollars and sixteen cents, according to USA Today. Um, I think one of the things too is that that's happening is after they unveiled it, uh, there were a couple of reviews that went out that were, uh, I guess, uh, lower than what analysts were expecting to see, and um, so 
basically a lot of these uh, changes that were also happening were somewhat questionable. Like one of the things that uh, I guess uh, BlackBerry did, formerly Research in Motion, was to hire Alicia Keys as their global creative director. So these kinds of moves were kind of uh, uh, made some dents and nerves to some of the stockholders. And uh, so the trading was kind of rampant during Wall Street. And sure enough, you know, they're expecting that uh, that there's probably going to be a projected fall. Now, this is still too early because, right, again, there's still a lot of things that are going on with the rest of the, the carriers and how they're going to unveil and how they're going to price these handsets. And that might change. So, But as far as uh, reviews, I think those are also – the reviews and the moves they've made uh, executive-wise are, are making – are uh, sending uh, vibes down Wall Street in a negative sense. I, I know we're seeing a lot of celebrities more in the tech bubble these days. I, I, you know, um, Ashton Kutcher is a big one, MC Hammer, um, Chameleon Air. But yeah. – mm-hmm. um, when you when you told when you read Alicia Keys, I had to double check if it wasn't some other Alicia Keys. Right. Alicia Keys, the singer, who right. sang you know Super Bowl and all. Um, did did I don't even know she had a BlackBerry beforehand. But did um, what what is her experience? I mean, other than having a beautiful voice and awesome piano playing, like what, what kind of business knowledge does she have? Do you My, know she has any like like uh, fashion design ideas or anything like that or? My assumption is that she's probably worked with the, her the the labels that she's been working under, you know. And my guess is that she's probably knowing the business side. And, and I guess a global creative director, you know, loosely their their duties would be to do a lot of marketing. So that's a very loose like you know responsibility. But at the same time, you know, um, I mean, they they wanted a name that was recognizable. I mean, it's not in the same sense like you know Marissa Mayer. She's recognizable to us, right? But not to like the rest of the public. You know when um, they got when Yahoo got her, but um, yeah, this course is questionable, and you know uh, it didn't send. It kind of sent analysts kind of, you know, uh, not very positive in terms of. Well, not to say that she's not qualified because we really don't know her full background and right. what her executive experience is like, but right. it's uh, from the get go. I mean, it's just the impressions. It's called perception, and a lot of that really. Mm-hmm changes that a lot so yeah it could be um, bad could be good yeah um you know i, I remember when i f- first got my motorola qc or qm rather um the spokesperson for that was that was a windows mobile device by the way uh the spokesperson was um that girl from black eyed peas what's her name again Friggy. yeah Mm-hmm. So she was a spokesperson. She wasn't any kind of creative director, but but anytime there's like any kind of question about how it works or anything, she got up on on stage and said, "This is what you do. This is you press these buttons and voila." And I was like, oh, "Okay, mm-hmm. you know, pretty face, sell it, sex appeal, boom." Um, so cool. Maybe that's uh, the same idea. Maybe not. Maybe Alicia Keys really can bring some really good business ideas to the to the table. And uh, hopefully we'll be seeing some stuff out of her and uh, BlackBerry in the next coming uh, coming months. Um, now going over to Android, uh, late, late last night, it looked like Android, or uh, well, I guess Android's, uh, I don't know what to call them, but the powerhouse of Android, by being Samsung, has actually announced a number of devices, and two of them, um, not sure if they're coming to the United States or not, but two of them was were the Galaxy Young and the Galaxy Fame, and these are both for the budget conscious market. So if you don't have a lot of cash on you, you really need a good phone. You don't want something that's too big because these are pocket sized. You don't want something that's too big but still has access to like Google Google Play and and Netflix and things like that. These might be really really good for you. So first and foremost, we've got here, as you can see on screen, this is the Samsung Galaxy Young. And uh, real quick, this has a one gigahertz processor with four gigabytes of internal storage for like music and photos. Um, it has only a one uh, one thousand three hundred milliamp battery, so not as long as some of the other ones. But again, this is a small small device. But it does come with Jelly Bean, and um, the I guess the sportier one the the uh, is going to be this one, the Galaxy Young. It has a, a three megapixel rear camera, three point two seven inch. Um, TFT display and it has a f- uh, f- sorry yeah the um, and uh, 
Sorry, the Galaxy Fame is is the more top one. The Fame has a five megapixel one, and it has a has a bigger screen, three point five. So, um, one thing that should also be noted is that these both come in single and dual SIM. So in some countries, not here in the States per se, but some countries, they have dual SIM phones and dual SIM capabilities. So if you want to switch off of one carrier to another and only have one phone, you'd be able to do that with, <coughs> with one of these guys. So, um, And like I said, there's no word on whether these are coming to the United States at all, but if they do, it would be a nice little phone maybe for prepaid, um, like an exhibit or something. You know um, what, though, and like, finally... Sorry, the... The size yeah, of this, of those, the size of those phones would would you say it be about the size of the Incredible? No, smaller. Smaller. The Incredible is three point seven inches. Okay. Yeah. Well, Small, the the screen is three point seven. The, these are smaller well, than that. I, so I about it, the size. Yeah, fine. <laughs> about I, the size. I think it does. The the, the size so. of the iPhone four. No, I was going to say, the, the size of the iPhone 4 and the 4S, the, at least the screen size, was, okay. was 3.5. Well, I, I think, like how you were saying that that would be a good prepaid phone, I think it does um, fit that uh, niche, not so much niche, but like there are people that don't want a really big phone, like my, you know, my wife is one of them. Your wife, and right. She, mm -hmm. Like she's electing to stick with her Droid Incredible, which is really old and really slow. And, I mean, I have a Thunderbolt line around. We're, we're probably going to go over the Thunderbolt later. But I, I was, like, telling her, like, you know, the Galaxy S2 is, is like, you know, 30 bucks or 50 bucks right now on, like, uh, at some stores. Mm -hmm. You know, why don't you go for that? And, like, you know, she's like, oh, I like the size of the Incredible. I'm like, you know, the, the this one, I mean, I do hope they bring these to the States. And I, I think it fits that, you know. Um, that that need or that you know that I mean, mid size range. Enough people? I'm sorry. You think there's enough people that want it? Uh, I don't know. Well, do you think the 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 Nexus Four kind of um, satisfies a uh, a niche that the Galaxy S3 is like, say, too big for some people? I don't know. It's like it's. It almost seems like, you know, you're pointing out the Galaxy S2, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's still a very good functional and fast phone. And right. I, I was looking at, you know, when I go through all these different uh, stores, I, it's hard for me to see the smaller screens now. Everyone's kind of going bigger. Exactly. And so I don't know if that's any, I don't know if that's reflective of the market and how the market's driving, I mean, the kind of devices and demand that people are asking for. Um, well, I mean, I mean it, it's like... the. That, I mean, these guys have I'm, the numbers, you know. What I mean, like these right. guys, like HTC, like they wanted to create a, you know, a five-inch Windows phone, but can't do it because the operating system is still not there to, you know, right. to do HD. So, but I mean, if they're willing to do these things and wanting to push those kinds of screen sizes, you know, what I mean, it's, it's like, wow. I mean, people are like, everyone thought that the phablet was, I mean, the whole, you know, the five-inch smartphone was going to be, you know, kind of a dead thing. And then Samsung came out of the boat and destroyed everybody, you know, with the Galaxy Note. So it it was like, well, we got to come up with a sequel now because everyone wants this, and it's and they made it bigger. <laughs> yeah, it made it bigger. So it's like, uh, it just seems like there's like no turning back. And if people want to have the phone, I mean, like they're gonna do it. It's just small phone. I think it's just, uh, it seems kind of nichey. I don't know if it's gonna be risky. I think it's not risky in other worlds, but I think it's risky here in the United States. I think four inches would be like the minimum, not minimum, but like would be the sweet spot for like people that don't want a too large of a phone, but don't want the too small of a phone. Because looking back at, because I, st I, I still have an incredible. iPhone 5. iPhone, well, iPhone 5. 5 is five inches. iPhone 5 is five inches? No, it's not. It's four. Is it, or, no, sorry, you're right, four inches. Um, so yeah, but um, the, uh, I was gonna say I, I still have the incredible for for um, for my son to play with and it's mm -hmm. even for him because he's used to our phones like he's he, even he says this screen is tiny but you know obviously th there are gonna be a, a few people may maybe a couple of hundred maybe a couple thousand that still need um, that still need a small screen but I don't mm -hmm. think 3.7 inches is is going to be um, I don't think anything below four is going to be normal anymore. Well, yeah. how much do you think they're going to be? Four. No, I mean, how much in price do you think? Oh, price? Probably like three. The, the, the better one, the, the one with NFC and... and uh, 
You mean at that size, at, at four inches? I think that's – is that the young? The the better one is the – between those two galaxy uh, – You mean between the yeah, two they, and the three? The, the young and the fame. Oh, and the fame. Like the, there's, a, there's one that, you know, that has – which I, I kind of don't understand why they're doing two different models, but they're like if if they're both supposed to be budget smartphones, right? Um, well, one one of them is only available in certain colors, while the other is only available in certain colors. <laughs> Boom! There you go, color choices. Okay. You um, got me. Yeah, I did. <laughs> what was the thing again, Tony? What was the uh, specs like? Is it a quad core or what is no, it? Single. No, sing, uh, single. It's single. So yeah. I don't even think you would even be able to push stuff. I mean, I don't, it'd probably be comparable to what Joy has now, right? I mean, yeah, uh, that, that has a single one gigahertz. It's only a single, single core. core. I mean, like they yeah. come out with a budget version of Windows. But these would have these would be fast enough to run Jelly Bean, and you know, have yeah, have but the newer it's operating like, systems. It, it's not, but yeah, just because it's the, the because Jelly Bean running on a, a slower processing power, mm -hmm. it's it's you're not gonna get the you're not gonna get the same fabulous experience that you get on your Galaxy S3 or I get on my uh, um, Razer M. Yeah, I, right, should, I should have her try out my Razer M. It's not that big. It really yeah. isn't. Um, Honestly speaking, some... I mean, they, she still doesn't... Let's bring doesn't her on. Let, let's see. <laughs> Go get her. Go wake her up. <laughs> Enjoy. I think. No. <laughs> I don't know, but... Like, I mean, she... She notices that the S3 is faster than her phone, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. Whether that matters to her or not, that's another that's another story. Mm -hmm. So, I think that there's there may be more to it than like I mean we're all techie people and we want the latest right. and latest, but there I I mean I'm I'm thinking as far as like you know they wouldn't make something like this unless there may be some you know people that that wouldn't it wouldn't matter you know what i mean so the reason why i keep i keep uh, mentioning the point i don't know if this is coming to the united states is because mm -hmm. there are some countries out there where people just want a freaking phone they just want it to work right. yep. blackberry is huge in certain areas because their crappiest phone is their best seller mm -hmm. you know and so this kind of idea that it is a budget friendly phone it is not the best phone and people know what they're getting into they just need a phone to work and if it has internet and nfc that's neither here nor there. They they just like great, awesome. It it, it can turn on. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, again, I don't know why they did the fame and the young. Um, as long as they didn't do the whole alphabet soup thing that they tried <laughs> a year ago, if you remember yeah. that. Right. Well, um, although like they are extending that Galaxy brand, right? I mean, it's still under that Galaxy. It is under brand. that Galaxy, which is surprising. You're right. I don't know right. why they well, call it a you Galaxy. Think, do you think Samsung is far enough along with these Galaxy devices that just having the Galaxy name, similar to like how there's the i names on on all the Apple stuff, that people have it, their marketing perception is that it would just work. I agree. It's, it's already working. It's always that's it's what already doing. working. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. People, people already like what kind of phone? Oh, I have a Galaxy. Yeah. Is it a Galaxy S two, three? I don't know. It's a Galaxy. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. That's all people I, care I, about. I mean, I guess that's that's what I'm what I'm thinking. Like it, how it, it's a budget class phone but mm -hmm. and it's like maybe for those people that are like oh this is just too big for me i i have small hands or something you know right right and, and, and uh i mean it's maybe just that speed doesn't matter and i mean hey it runs jelly bean you know which is right now the latest sure so yeah i, does I, it, does I just it run jelly bean that those yes. phones they run jelly bean yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's what i'm saying it's gonna be Jelly Bean with your facial unlock and this and that, but it's probably going to be a little tad slow and it's like, eh, you know. I guess it's kind of like those. I, I think there's a market for it, even there, here. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what we're making it, right? Over at yeah. Offset, offshore, so. Interesting. Well, we, we will see. Thank you very much. Um, let's go ahead and move on one last time, uh, Android-wise, and uh, check out a phone that's going to Metro PCS. Now, this is the LG Spirit 4G, and... Uh, it too is kind of a budget friendly phone and budget friendly in the sense that it's two hundred dollars on a no contract plan so this for two hundred bucks you get this actually pretty decent phone considering if you go to uh, Verizon or at and and you want to buy a phone without a contract you're gonna spend upwards of five hundred six hundred dollars so uh, with the uh, LG spirit 
uh, you get a phone that is actually 4.5 inches in diagonal, Android 4.0, so it's only ice cream sandwich, but you might be able to upload it to uh, Jelly Bean. It's got a dual-core 1.2 gigahertz processor, a 5 megapixel rear shooter, 1.3 megapixel front shooter, and uh, yeah, I, it, yeah, it's another budget-friendly phone that you can actually go and test out right now. It's available right now, and uh, as a last kind of thing that they're doing, a Pro C will go towards after-school all-stars if you buy this at Metro PCS's website right now. So, any thoughts on that, gentlemen? Uh, oh, I mean, it's supposed to be covering its market as usual. I think it's uh, yeah. I like the design of it. Yeah, I mean, what's really nice is the LG Quick Memo, that ability that you can kind of uh, make a note on the screen, like a screenshot, make a note and draw on the screen, and then you can email that screenshot to your friends or family or business uh, colleagues or things like that. It's kind of nice. It's mm. kind of helpful. Um, yeah. I don't believe that this comes with a stylus, even though it has a the writing ability, but you can just use your fingertip. How, how um, big was the screen? 4.5. Oh, okay. That's pretty large. Yeah. Pretty pretty good. So yeah. um, let's go ahead and take a break. And uh, we'd like to thank our newest sponsor, which is Dine.com. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, if you're in the, <coughs> excuse me, if you're in need of extremely fast as well as reliable DNS service, then look no further than Dine. That's Dine.com. Uptime is the bottom line. They've got features like active fi failover, load balancing, and even global traffic management, all of which will ensure that no matter which DNS problems may occur, Dine will keep your site up and running. They've got other advantages such as remote access to DVRs, webcams, and other devices. And with some better, better packages, you can even have your own domain name. So... That is dyndyne.com to get faster internet. And they are giving you guys an awesome deal right now. If you go to dyne.com slash podcast30, fill out the contact form, you start shopping right away, you save 30% with the promo code podcast30. Once again, go to dyne.com slash podcast30, fill out the contact form, and you save 30% right away at the... Um, on Dine.com, and we thank them for being sponsors of the Wireless Weekly. Now, considering I'm about to lose my voice, and <laughs> I'm about to lose my voice, and I need, need to get a drink of water, I'm going to turn the reins over to Victor. Now, Victor has been trying to update a device for the past couple of days, but he's going to go ahead and talk about the updates to the first 4G LTE device at least on Verizon Wireless, which was the Thunderbolt. Vic? Okay, so yeah, the, basically right there, the Thunderbolt finally gets ice cream sandwich. Um, what that means is that you, you get, you're you stepping into a world closer to being modern on, <laughs> on a Thunderbolt. But I guess the, the big dilemma is, is it too late for most users? And uh, mm. for me, it was too late because I've already moved on mm. from it. And, uh, I mean, the amount of time that I spent trying to solve problems with this phone, looking at other forums, it looks like other people are having those problems, too. <laughs> so, um, uh, I mean, it's, it's a good day for people who are still stuck on their Thunderbolts. Um, if you still have one that you're not using um, and you're trying to just update it over Wi-Fi... So far, I have not been able to get that to work, and uh, it looks like a lot of other people have been having that issue too. Um, so it's uh, like when I try to update it, it basically says you need to have an activated SIM card in there, which on um, my, huh? Like, I guess it still needs to be activated with Verizon in order to, to start downloading the update. Huh which is really weird because some of my other older devices that are not activated, um, like, for example, the Motorola Zoom, um, which has uh, 3G or 4G built into it, um, I was still able to up get update it to Ice Cream Sandwich, even though I'm not, you know, subscribed to any 3G or 4G on it. Mm. Um, who, which, who, um, 
Who got you the update? Did 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 the update come through Motorola or did it come through Verizon for for the uh, Zoom? Do you remember? Uh, you know what? I'm not sure, but over Wi-Fi, it still posted that little you know that little gray box that says uh, you know there's a there's a new software update available. So all right, which uh, should be the case with this thing too, but it's not. It's so, not. <laughs> uh, I may have Darn to thing. either go to the Verizon store and ask them if. I can update over theirs, or, or may go to a, to a friend, um, which I do know, a few coworkers that still have a Thunderbolt. Maybe I'll ask them if I can put their SIM in just to start downloading the update, um, because uh, I mean I'm sure for gaming this processor is still fast enough for. Yeah, that's what I was actually going to ask you. <laughs> I was going to ask you, uh, like, there were pro- people that were successful having it updated, right, on the forums. What was their experience like with the new update? Um, I didn't get that far as far as um, anybody saying that. Uh, actually, I'll take that back. Uh, what I was more of going through on the forums at this time was seeing if people were successful just updating over Wi-Fi. Um, and apparently there's a lot of people that have moved on from this phone and there was no fix that I was able to find yet for mm-hmm. people who are still on white, um, who are, who have unactivated phones. Um, as far as like people who have successfully, act, uh, downloaded the update there. I mean, all you, all I was able to see was just people saying, oh, I got it. Mm-hmm. I got it. Or I'll, there was more, uh, Good luck to people who still who are still stuck with that phone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it, it's. I'm sure if I have it on Wi-Fi, it, it it'll probably be a good you know remote control for <laughs> for a, um, like a an Android TV or something like that. Anything I, I can use under Wi-Fi. Mm. Uh, so that's that's what I'm looking to use it for, and maybe even just you know. Like is that a, so? Is that Joy's thing. phone? Is that no, no, nobody's using it. Oh, okay, it's just so. another. Okay. So yeah, I was. Do they I still was, sell it? They don't sell it anymore, right? The Thunderbolt. Not at all. Not at all. Mm-hmm. What do you think this sends to the um, HTC community? Like for people that are like diehard HTC fans, like did the fact that they finally said, "Here, we promised you this like a year ago. Here it is now. Like we kept our promise. We're just late." The, <laughs> But they, I, I mean, does HTC even care? I mean, they're they're in the market of hardware. You know what I mean, right. like, and they're right now, you know, they're but like bleeding. Customers you know, buy the hardware, yeah. so they should care to a certain extent. Well, yeah. I mean, if, if, if they if they were to say we're not going to upgrade it to ice cream sandwich, then no one would care. Mm-hmm. And if they said, oh, by the way, we're giving you ice cream sandwich, like, oh, well, that's nice of you. But because they promised it a year ago, or even six months ago, and they still didn't deliver until now, it's like, well, you you. You delayed and delayed and delayed. We don't really care that you even came through now because we don't know if you're going to come through on the other devices for like Key Lime Pie or the next update to Jelly Bean or this or this or that. Right. I mean, it's that's my take. I don't know what you guys think. Yeah. I mean, so I mean I'm speaking as a as a customer, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody who 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 paid money for this phone, and I I know a lot of other people are in that in that boat with it. Actually, Tony, you've owned this phone for a while, right? Yeah, I did. Um, and it to me and, it just sends, and you notice I don't have HPC <laughs> anymore. It, it sends to me it sends that that message that hey even though Samsung is constantly upgrading their phones, you know this one's still on two point three or whatever you know. Mm-hmm. And there was I mean it's one thing if you know it's for the you know the latest and greatest, but there was a lot of things wrong with this phone. <laughs> and there was a, and I mean, there was almost no way to tell whether it was hardware or software. But, right. but um, I mean, the first CES we went to, Rad, remember this was. Yes, like, that's where I first found out Thunderbolt. I was actually yeah, there was, when I was going to. It was it. like, this is, we're going to step into 4G. Yeah, like, oh, oh, this ah, is going to be the right. magic phone. Ah, <laughs> right, right. You're going to be hoping. like the coolest even, person on the block mm-hmm. if you have this phone. Yeah, and then that was, like, and everyone got it, and then they said yeah. it sucked. So I was just like, okay. I think really, you know, you guys talk about like these promises that these companies make for these updates. I almost see no point in it. Like, I have a friend who's a diehard Android fan, 
and he's, I mean, you know Ryan, right, Vic? Mm -hmm. He talks about, I don't know why people are so up to tight about getting their update for their phone. Just get a new phone, which is actually, you know, you know, it's almost kind of funny because there are so many Android phones out there, and you can get them for 50 bucks or even free, you know, and you're going to have a better performance than what you had in your previous one, and it's still Android. Not if you're on yeah. contract, though. Here's, here's you know the I mean? thing, though. I, honestly speaking, I think this whole thing about wanting to have the latest operating system, I, I have a feeling that's, that's going to go away soon. Because with, with, with Android, like, wouldn't you say that the Android operating system, they've... They're getting better. They're a lot better. <clears throat> no, yeah. Caught up to, to iOS with features, right? So with all of these... Sure. Uh, all of these um, subsequent updates are, are more of just minor things here and there. Like, you know, wouldn't it nice to have this? Wouldn't it nice to have, to have that? So I think when now that we have, um, I mean, I honestly, I, d I don't think we have that widespread issue of a developer making an app and it doesn't work over so many devices that, that, um, you know that fragmentation issue is is as rampant as it used to be. Well, it depends on what app it is. Like for instance, okay, my dad has um, he has I want to say I can't the HTC. You said the Droid. You, I thought you said he had the, the Droid, Droid Two. Yeah, Droid Two, Droid One Three. One of those, yeah. Yeah, for sure, it has like four point one or four point zero. And my mom has the uh, she has the uh, the Droid Max, right? She has the Max, and I don't know if it's the max or whatever, but all I know is that one's gingerbread and the other one's ice cream sandwich. Okay. And they have a security app, right? They have an app that basically you can watch, you know, what's happening around your home because they have these live cameras and they stream directly to the phone. They only work for one of those phones. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a problem to them because they want to have, they want to both see, they want to be able to see their save or survey their phones. If my dad left his phone at home, he would want to say, can you download this? My mom's like, I can't. It just says inc incompatible, or the reviews mm. say I can't do it because my phone is this, or it's this model, or it's this, that, or that. So, I mean, that kind of stuff is a big deal, like when you're dealing right. with stuff like those kinds of apps. And there's a lot of people that have security systems, and if you can't do that... I, I, I think that, you know, having ice cream sandwich as the, you know, the lowest common denominator, yeah. I think, is... is Going forward, I think that's going to be a lot more common. Like, you know how, um, like that problem that you're saying, as these, you know, we have, we move past that threshold of of being able to get the ice cream sandwich or not. Mm -hmm. I think well, as I, people get, you know, do the upgrade to those new phones, I I just think that that fragmentation thing is, is going to start being less and less a problem. Hopefully. Well, yeah. we're, al we're, already, yeah. Yeah. we're already starting to see it. Um, what I'm bringing to my screen, guys, is actually the latest developer graph. We're, um, Jay's actually doing an article that's going to go live at 5 a.m. In, 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 a, in a couple of hours. But um, basically, gingerbread, as you can see, is like still the majority of the graph, but we're seeing it go away. And we're seeing ice cream sandwich become that larger key mm -hmm. point and, and, and jelly bean also being kind of a, a, a spin-off from that. But, you know, Froyo, Eclair, Honeycomb, if you, if you remember that, they're, they're going to be things of the past. And um, when Gingerbread was the baseline for specific apps and then uh, Ice Cream Sandwich came out, that was a huge culture shock because it was a big change for developers um, with the new language and everything, new uh, system requirements, and how you know how the how the design is, was supposed to be? I think now that everyone's going to be acclimated to I, I, ICS, that I think Vic is going to be right. Whoever's developing these apps for security systems, they're they're going to see okay. Now that you know, ice cream sandwich is what I should should go for, and hopefully Google will say okay. We we we're seeing that people are are developing for one system, and it's working on the uh, sy systems like like uh, afterwards that. We shouldn't make it this complicated later on. Hopefully, they'll be doing that to make it easier. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I think with the uh, the current state of Windows Phone, do you think that that's going to be an issue with with 
those users read or the yeah, for the adoption it's a major of Windows issue. Phone? I think it's a major issue. So I think, uh, I mean, I'm being completely honest. I mean, I was, I, I don't discriminate on what I think is a good operating system. I look at, you know, all of the, the bases and what's good or what's not so good between all of them. That being said, uh, since we're kind of jumping around here, there's the news that's coming out where Nokia is getting 7.8, right? Mm -hmm. The big problem with 7.8 is it's still 7. It's still Windows Phone 7. So what's the big difference? I guess Windows Phone 7 still runs uh, not really on a Windows kernel, and the current Windows Phone 8 runs on the NT kernel, which is basically if you build for your PC or you mm -hmm. write apps for it, essentially there's going to be very, very less changes you have to make for it to work on Windows Phone 8. So... 7.8 is almost like... Really? Sorry? Are you... I can, okay. So, yeah, Windows 7.8 really is just like... We make it look like Windows 8, but all the apps that work for your 7.8 is probably ahead, not ahead. going to work that much anymore. So, that's what's happening right now. Um, so, a lot of developers are developing on Windows Phone 8. They're, they're, uh, they're saying, well, we, we don't want to make it compatible with 7.8. We're just going to try to build 8. And it's just a literally a clean cut between 7.8 and 8. And I, I think that's how, I mean, no, probably not to that extent, but I think that's how, you know, going from uh, going up into ice cream sandwiches, like that's their cut, you know, for compatibility going forward, I think. Yeah. At it's least just for Android. Of, yeah, it's like, it's just, I think the developers understand what's at stake. I mean, they want mm -hmm. to, they want Android to work. I mean, it's starting to go everywhere. Um, my f the only thing, and I always keep saying, playing devil's advocate on an Android, is I want everyone to just trash 2.3. You know what I mean? I want mm -hmm. them to not download this thing or build these cheap app, you know, these cheap tablets, and use 2.3. Use four. And if you can, if you don't have the hardware, you know that meets it, that meets four, don't even build it. You know what I mean? I, I think we're getting to that point now because if you if you look at some of the ads that where they're selling the the hundred fifty dollar and below. Price tablets. They they say ice cream sandwich, well, it, or they say fact, Android four. So the CES when we went to the last one, I, I saw the Z pad. It's running ICE. So mm -hmm. I mean, um, uh, ICS. So it's like um, I was over there, and it's like a, literally a you know ten twenty four seven sixty eight resolution type tablet, super cheap, sixty bucks. ICS, and that's where everything. That's where I would see a large adoption. That's where I would see two point three out the window. Because right. that's where all these guys from the outside, from the worldwide, who are just making just tons and tons of all this hardware. I mean, it's just everywhere. You see all over, you know, CES. But once they, once all these guys make that move and say, you know what, it doesn't cost us anymore, and Google says, you know what, this here it is for free. We're not going to charge your support for it. That's when I would be like, you know what, I don't mind moving to Android. So um, that's always been the thing with me. Like, I have the Galaxy Player. That's still 2.3, but they're not going to upgrade that. So when I'm like downloading apps on it, I'm like, oh, this is cool. I can't download this though. It sucks. So really? like, they're, they're not, they're not nope. going to update that. Uh -uh. No. Nope. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, they so probably, they probably won't. They won't. They're just going to create a new one, and you just buy it. You know, hundred bucks. ICS, which is smarter. I mean, you want to, you don't want to like support, spend all this support to, you know, create a whole new operating system upgrade, send it through the Wi-Fi. And then you got all these employees from Samsung, like, oh man, it doesn't work. You know what I mean? And then they have to spend all that development time to to support that and support the customers for it when they could just here's a new device. Yeah. So. Um, well, yeah. not everyone can just afford getting the new device, though. I mean, you can't right. just add any back and uh, any that's hard, time. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's that's you know we call it the waiting game, right? So when yeah, the new one totally comes is. out, yeah, yeah, it's so well, but it's, that, there was that's a, where. That's where, like, I guess our previous discussion comes in is like, wouldn't like how how you know me and Tony as previous you know previous Thunderbolt owners are pretty much not gonna buy an HTC phone anymore because of the brand perception or the they brand. just gotta prove me that they're gonna get on their game again. That's all. Right, and I Samsung's mean, it's, proved their game over and over again that they've it, they've gotten to it. I mean, you, you, you guys have been in retail before, and, like, um, uh, I mean, I know, Tony, you've sold electronics before. I mean, do, ha haven't you had a lot of those customers come up to you and say, isn't this going to be obsolete in, in a year? And, like, wouldn't that, yeah. wouldn't, that go, wouldn't that go 
Yeah. For and I mean, isn't that one of the reasons why perhaps people are adopting these Galaxy S3s or the Galaxy Notes because their Samsung is keeping them current and you know basically giving that brand perception that hey, this is not going to be obsolete if they're going to keep it up to date. You know, you know what I mean. Well, you bought yours when it was cheaper, right? Right, but. That was the one I was looking at because one, a lot of people were adopting that phone, right? Mm. And two, the other, like to me, the perception is, you know, like I said, Samsung is keeping these these devices up to date. I'm, I mean, relatively quickly, with the exception of you know the the Nexus devices. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, oh. yeah, it's. I mean, they're making good quality hardware, right? Like. Mm -hmm. um, my, I haven't got a chance to experience like the HTC line. I just know that when I have friends that had the HTC, like they had the Evo. When I was with Sprint, I had a couple of friends that had the Evo, right? Mm -hmm. And they had the second version of that, but they just kept, they either were dying so quickly because of the battery issue or uh, compatibility issues with certain apps. And, um, but yeah, there, were, there was just a lot of issues that, that HTC was having, you know, with, with those phones and then their support was just horrible. So, um, and I almost feel like they're I almost feel like they're somewhat starting over with Windows because, like they're they're in this weird world now where they're kind of on Android and then they're making this deal with Microsoft where it's like, well, maybe we could kind of start fresh. Microsoft will kind of throw us a little bit of funding our way and we could do something here and hopefully we don't mess up here. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of how I feel. Um, and you know, my wife is she she likes this phone. She likes the HTC phone, but she feels like it could be a little bit better. Um, but yeah, she was even asking me, what do you think about Android? I was like, it's a good phone. It just depends on what you want to get. So yeah. Um, well, that's so what's definitely next? very, very good points. Um, let's go ahead and move on because that was a really, really good discussion, but, um, I do want to move on now, um, but it's still sticking with Android. This is the Ouya mm -hmm. Android gaming console. And, I personally haven't gotten a chance to, to try it out, but I have talked to a couple of uh, guys who have uh, Chris Chavez from uh, Fandroid, and he says it's actually pretty mm -hmm. dope, uh, which is the technical term, dope. Um, this is a gaming console built on top of Android. I'm not sure what version of Android, but um, I would expect uh, ICS. And it works um, works in the sense that you can actually use on live with it and has other partners like TuneIn, Vivo, uh, XM, XBMC, and you could like use uh, Android games on there. And and uh, I don't, I, I guess on live versus Steam. I don't know if Steam is going to be on it. But uh, Rad, what's the big news? So uh, Ouya is going to be uh, found in stores around June, and basically the console will be sold for around ninety nine dollars, and additional controls will be fifty bucks. Now, uh, as you said in the article that you wrote, it's, it is a bit up there, but at the same time, you, you have access to pretty much the whole Android. I mean, you have access to all the Android games that are out there, and if you're familiar with a lot of Android gaming, uh, they mirror a lot of what already iOS has for iPad and iPhone. So, I mean, aside from you know, Infinity Blade and all those other you know, exclusives... There's no Street have, Fighter. Say again? Yeah, no, There's Street no Street Fighter. Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, um, yeah, there is like Shadow Gun and all these other ones. There's a couple of other. Um, couple of There's no games. Marvel versus Capcom. <laughs> Victor, go away. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. but but Victor does make a good point. I mean, we we do have our gaming favorites. I have my own favorites as well too. Um, but one thing that is going to make this really stick very well is the mapping mm -hmm. uh, of the controls. Uh, Rad um, or Vic, have you? Either of you read any good, good or bad reviews on how the controls are when it when it comes to you know getting it acclimated with the game? No, but I'm I, honestly I'm I'm intrigued by by this one, and hopefully, um, like a lot of like we start seeing like a lot of the old school arcade stuff on it, like you know the, those old Sega arcade games. Um, Especially gun games. Yeah, I think Those there's gonna tight. be a, 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 a <laughs> like virtual cop. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pew pew. Yeah. What are you saying, Rad? 
I was uh, what I was saying is I think there's going to be a good market for it because if you remember, um, they raised about what 8.5 million or over that. You know, when yeah. you're, do, you're doing the Kickstarter project, so I mean, it's pretty, pretty much like the market's already pretty much going to, uh, you know, say, yeah, this is pretty much something we don't mind buying to. I mean, it might sound like uh, a lot from out the gate, you know, at a hundred dollars. But when you compare it to a Roku or any of those things, I mean, it's basically you're getting double the functionality. Secondly, uh, uh, the other thing too is that with an Ouya, you're also you, there's that mentality where if you buy a game, it's not going to be a forty or fifty dollar game; it'll be two dollars, five dollars, or whatnot. Um, my only issue would probably be the experience because of the fact that a lot of it are touch based, and you probably would see the, the buttons on the screen. So I don't know how the mapping would work. I'm not yeah, sure what the what gaming experience would be like. You know, I mean, it's those kinds of things. I think uh, I consider like console gaming and touch gaming to be very, very different. So, so that's why there's a that's why there's a touchpad on the yeah. control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. I, mean, I just don't know what that's going to feel like when you actually play the game. You know what I mean? It must feel weird, like you're you're outside of the game. You're just like sliding up and down on your hand. Uh, whereas you're used to doing on the screen, looking as your character goes up and down, like right. That's around. why. That's why I questioned that experience yeah. because on a touch screen, when you design games for like real time strategy or Angry Birds, you know, what I mean, Angry Birds could work because you could see tra the trajectory of the bird that you're launching, right? But for some games that require visual pinpoint touching, you have to see the screen. You're actually touching the character and the action that you're performing. So on a, on a controller, you're guessing where that character is. You're guessing where you're going to be pointing and things like that. So just using approximations of your touch to hopefully, you know, create a, you know, a similar experience. I just don't know if that, that kind of experience will be mirrored when you do it. So that's what I'm curious about. I really want to get my hands on it and see. What's that you got there, Vic? Oh, no, I'm just saying I, I have a remote control for it already. <laughs> <laughs> a smart glass. Heck of a <laughs> They do that right now, which is so yeah. funny. It, you know what, though? Like, um, I, I guess on a similar note, I don't know if you guys have seen like those Bluetooth controllers that they're starting to make for Android. Oh, actually, yeah. yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I recently picked up the twenty-five dollar one at GameStop. Oh, you did get that, it. I was going to yeah. ask you. Okay. I, I had to look around for it because not all GameStops have it. But so if, if which, which controller is it? For, it? It's a. It's the GameStop brand, I think. Their brand is called Red Samurai now, or something like that. What? Um, <laughs> yeah. Did you try the other one? I, I, I let, uh, that you got. Um, did you try briefly? The, uh... I, I tried it briefly, but um, in the time since coming back from CES, I can't find it. So oh God. It's, in, it's in one of our bags somewhere. It's probably one of your bags. <laughs> one of my bags. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Anyways. Um, <laughs> It's a it's a Bluetooth controller. It looks it, it looks and feels just like a PlayStation controller. Okay, mm. but not exactly a PlayStation like one of those third. So basically, some kind of mold that some from Chinese manufacturer yeah. just used. <laughs> so it's a, it's the same thing. Two two analog sticks. You know the mm. the four buttons and the right. the four triggers. Okay, um, and it has a list on the box. Actually, hang on a second. This is the box here, so it looks like that. Move it back, move it back. Okay. Move it back, there you go. Not too far back. There. Stop. Okay. Anyways, so it uses Bluetooth, and on the back of the box here, it gives you a list of what games it works with and what. What? That's a pretty short list. <laughs> That's yeah, a very short exactly. list. Exactly. So, and what tablets it works with. So, one of them is the Zoom, the Nexus 7, um, other tablets like that. Okay. So, being that it was Bluetooth, I was thinking I could hook it up to my Galaxy S3, right? Okay. Doesn't work. Wow. So, yeah. So, can you, I was... Can you manually I, map? No. There, oh there's no... There's just no it pairs, pairs, right? But you it, can't it really... Pairs, right. And then on the back of the on the back of the controller, there's a little switch that that will let you change it from keyboard mode to gamepad mode. <laughs> so, really? they, I mean, that in itself it tells you we are very early in the stages of gaming on the Android. Platform. Yeah, and it's I weird. Think, but... oh, I think that I think that Uya is going to go a long way in in getting us there. Who is that Razer tablet that you're talking about? Um, I think by by CES next year, gaming on Android is going to be be good be set but I mean 
when I paired this with the Zoom, it worked great with games that it will that are gamepad with it. Like that virtual, sucks. Like ah. virtual tennis. Virtual tennis was the only game that I had that I could use it with, which was what I bought it for. Well, I know you like the game pad from Arcos because yes, the, I wanted to bring that up because that the ma game. mapping was easy. Right. Yeah. Imagine if that was the controller itself, right? Yeah. And you had the display there, and I mean, it's not. I mean, I don't know if anyone would spend a hundred dollars on a controller, but I know right. I do know that like if if they can at least figure out a way to figure out, I mean, create an interface where they can where they can link up whatever they're mapping with the on-screen, you know, touch touchpad, mm -hmm. then that would that would solve a lot of problems. You know, what I mean, right. it would still kind of look weird. I mean, from a console standpoint, where you see the buttons on screen, but if if developers are smart enough to remove that you know, to remove those uh, overlays as an option, you know, then that would be perfect, right? Like, you well, have that, the overlay. Go that's ahead. what I was wondering, though, like, as as a developer yourself, Rad, wouldn't, given that th this controller has the option on the back to be a keyboard, game, gamepad mode or keyboard mode, mm -hmm. if it's mimicking the keyboard, why wouldn't that enable it to be universally accepted by games because for one thing EA games don't work with a gamepad and Gameloft games don't work mm -hmm. with a gamepad from the research that I've been I've been mm -hmm. doing on these I have a good and answer that's a lot of games mm -hmm. I have a there. very very good answer one word okay. driver that's okay. what it is so like um, if you go through any of the Android I don't know well obviously no one goes to the Android developer forums only me <laughs> so when you go through um, a lot of these guys that are putting them together and it, I always I'm always fascinated by it because I, when I see their feedback, they go, "How come there's no driver for X device?" And that's what happens. So Google's like, "Oh, let's let's make one." So they would create all of these different drivers and all of these API mappings, and then you know another you know hardware developer, say like that GameStop one, would come in and say, "Well, we want to do it for this." Or go, "Well, you can work it on for these devices or whatnot, and they would individually call these guys to get their API uh, maps for the so driver. So that's why it would work on the Zoom, but not yeah. on the and S3. They would, some okay. manufacturers, they would charge them to have the API mappings, because instead of, they'll say, why don't we charge you for the driver? We're just going to charge you $300,000 for it. And they would say, well, no, we can't do that. We're just starting. We just want to create a hardware that works for X, Y, and Z. So... For some businesses, what they would do is like, well, you know, we can't make this work across all devices. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of go to GameStop and then market it that way. So hopefully someone's going to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that kind of stuff. Like, that guy. Yeah. But, I mean, it's a, it's a mass market, right? GameStop has that kind of, like, that base where, you know, you're looking for a game. You're, they know those guys are carrying Android devices. They know they're carrying iPhone, right? So it's natural. it's a natural marketing ploy to... To put all of these devices to go with it, I mean, it's a natural, it's a natural cross-selling technique. Now, but it's my thing is, if there was a like, if they can do what Arcos was doing, of course, that would assume that's inside that tablet. That would be cool. I mean, mm -hmm. if if they if if Google could come out with a version of Android, and this is what all developers are asking. So I'm not the only one, at, you know, putting this idea out. But they're saying on the next version, they can have, you know, why don't we just have overlays that can turn on and off, so we can just say, okay, you know what? Here's the overlay on or off. When you're on a console, mm -hmm. it'll be off. When you're on a touchscreen, it'll be on. If you don't have a touchscreen, you use a controller. You map it to the controller. So, yeah. um, and what they what they're forcing Google to do is trying to do what Microsoft did with DirectX, which is, you know what? Forget all this stuff. Just you create the middleware, and then you write to that middle, you, and then all the manufacturers will just write to that, and then all the developers will just reference that instead of going to, okay, how many devices are out here? There's 60 of them. Damn it. See what I mean? So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, as a game developer, you're like, well, I want to work for all of these, but I don't want I don't have time to create a driver for all of those guys. So it's 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 a it's fascinating though. Like I like looking into that stuff. But yes. um, um, hopefully a year from now it'll be a lot better. Yeah. Um, did on the on the actual story itself though? Did uh, I I forget? Did we even mention which stores that this is the Ouya is going to be? Oh, uh, Target. Um, what else? <laughs> Target, Best Buy. Amazon's uh, gonna get it Amazon. too. Amazon. Right? Yeah, GameStop too. So uh, you have all these guys that are that are kind of coming in. And, and 
it's it's such a good niche market because there's I know a variety of people who are into Android games. I'm into Android games. Like I'm into a couple of these RPGs that are on my Galaxy Player, and um, it's one of those things right now that I think uh, they could really take advantage of to take it to you know a full screen and people are like, oh cool, I could play you know, Zenonia one two three or four five mm-hmm. on the console. So that's something that I know will work perfectly on the console, and those touch screens can overlays can be can be removed. Even right now, they can be removed. So. Super yeah, there's. Cool. Yeah, I. I mean, like I said, it. I. I think as far as development, you've, you've attested that by that, that whole story about DirectX and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. And we're we're like still early in and on, at, with Android being a gaming platform, um, and I mean one of those things I think is like being able to transport game saves. Oh yeah, so, that's huge. That would that's, be huge. Which, which I, I don't know if that's even possible right now. And I well, haven't can, been able to figure that out. So. Well, I mean, at Google Drive right now, mm-hmm. they have all this stuff. So if you Google Drive has an API, which I think they do, you just map the API in your set. Mm-hmm. I mean, that would be awesome. You know what I mean? If you want to share your saves with someone else, it's just like any other file. You just send it off. So um, I think they, they, there's a, like, a lot of opportunity on the Android, you know, um, uh, in the Android world. I just hope that like the community really gets together and Google really knows how to foster that community and make it like run smooth because I think that's going to be the key. So yeah, exciting times. Well, thanks guys. Let's go ahead and move on into the app section. We haven't done this for a little bit. Movie pass for Android. This is actually quite cool. Uh, it's still in beta right now, but essentially what movie pass allows you to do is with a subscription of $30 a month, you can actually watch a movie every single day for 30 bucks a month. Uh, it is a subscription. I don't believe that there's any kind of um, any kind of contract or anything like that right now, and it's also still in beta. Um, but yeah, essentially, you choose what movie you want, and if the specific theater that you want to go to supports Movie Pass, um, I guess that you show them that you have a Movie Pass credit card and uh, or Movie, movie Pass. Pass credit, something like that, and uh, and you're able to watch the film. Zero Dark Thirty or whatever film that you want to watch. So that's pretty cool. I mean, I know there's a lot of film goers out there, and I hope I'm I'm quoting this to be correct because if thirty dollars a month is how much it costs, that's pretty darn cool. Um, now, I, Did mind you, have a free you trial? <laughs> what was that? Did he have a free thirty day trial? <laughs> <laughs> I wish, right? Um, this this does exclude, however, IMAX and three D films. Uh, so if there's any kind of like special feature films that um, like, you, you know those, like, you're able to watch, like, UFC live events or boxing events mm. at theaters. I think those events are excluded from that, so. Mm. Um, but it kind of makes sense. Those are, you know, like, premium events. Now, Rad, you had mentioned earlier something called Polar Bear for, um, for BlackBerry, and it's also going to be devised uh, for Android, Windows, Mac, and uh, and the playbook and right now polar bear is available for both blackberry 10 and the playbook but could you tell our readers listeners and viewers what exactly polar bear is all about so polar bear allows you to post pretty much whatever it is that you need to post on multiple se- social networks you know all at the same time and right now you can share pretty much to anything like well i guess the social networks is which one are they so you you're looking at facebook facebook pages tumblr blogger Blogspot and Posturus. Um, Posturus, we don't really use that often, but it's out there. Um, it's still it, there. Yeah. So you just have uh, Google Plus, Twitter feed, and a couple of other ones. I haven't got to see the full list, but uh, there's basically a, a private beta going at the moment. Um, and this will allow you to share pretty much short URLs, photos, and other bunch of other cool things that you could share through your BlackBerry, So, which is interesting. So... Um, I'm wondering um, who are the guys that are behind this because I wanted to know if they had other apps that were also in BlackBerry because uh, to have them pushing them out like this. this is I could ask him because I, 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 he's emailed me because I'm in the beta list for the Android one. Oh, okay. So he, he's emailed me saying, we're on BlackBerry 10. And I'm like, I know. I want the Android one. <laughs> or give me yeah. the Windows one. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'll see. I'll, but um, yeah, if you go to uh, facebook.com slash polar bear app, I think that's all it is. Um, uh, that that's what they're. Uh, you, you could see if they have any other, any other uh, development. But they're. Um, 
I guess Polar Fox is the name, and the guy is uh, Andre Weir. Mm. And I hope I'm pronouncing your name properly. If I'm not, I apologize. <laughs> it's like Pandroid Whis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and last but last but not least, um, Rad. I don't know. I don't know if you if you read up on this uh, on a lot, but the evasion break, uh, jailbreak um, for iOS six. This was a this was a big big deal to hackers or mm-hmm. people that wanted to be able to jail, jailbreak their iPhone five. Mm-hmm. And uh, it became available over this over the over the weekend, but apparently mm-hmm. there was some sort of bug that right. kind of came with it. I don't know if the bug has been fixed or not, but uh, what's going on? Basically, uh, the bug ended up crashing uh, the system, and basically, uh, they also made a, a, a weather app to show up on the iPad. And it was, <laughs> and it, it was just it was kind of uh, pretty funny when I was reading the the news. So basically, when you execute the jailbreak, uh, they notice that a bunch of the other, w- w- once they start looking at the weather, things started to crash, and somebody went on Twitter and said, "Affected by the random boot bug," and uh, a lot of these guys have been wanting the jailbreak ha- have have uh, been going through this issue for quite some time. Damn. Yeah. Do you know if they? I, I know they say they they ca- they were gonna work on a fix. Do you know if they came up with the fix or not? No, there it's underway at the moment. So it's underway now. Yeah, it's okay. underway now at the moment. In fact, uh, looking at the uh, the post that it was linked to, uh, they said the the guys behind the um, behind the team uh, evaders is actually going to be working on the fix as fast as they can because they're they're getting hammered on Twitter right now. So oh, I bet. Um, yeah, yeah, they're getting hammered a lot. Um, so basically, one of the big things right now is, of course, trying to make sure the compatibility works across the board and that all the other stuff, like the normal things like weather apps and messaging and all the stuff is going to work. Um, right now, they're, they've put out a, a workaround, which is a step-by-step tutorial that, that is um, on their uh, the Vader site, but you could check it out. Um, but yeah, you could go on our website and check it out. There's also an evasion fact page that, that tells you the risks when you're doing the jailbreaking. It's pretty crazy. I almost thought about doing it on the iPhone that we have, but I was like, I don't know if I should. So, yeah. Since we're not really using it anymore. Yeah. yeah. It didn't matter anyway. But, um, yeah. Cool. Well, that's pretty much it, gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining uh, this evening um, uh, for this episode of the Wilds Weekly. Rad, while I have you on the main screen, why don't you let everybody know how to get in contact with you? You can get in contact with me by email at radford at lazytechguys.com or uh, Twitter at Radford, <laughs> at Radford or Rad Castro, excuse me. And, of course, you could you know, just leave anything or, or go to Facebook, Rad Castro. Awesome. Thank you, Rad. And what about yourself, Victor? I'm just kidding. Yeah, mine's, uh, <laughs> my Twitter is at LTGVictor. So. All right. And if you want to get in contact with me, you can always follow me on Twitter as well, LTG Tony, um, about me, about dot meat slash T Ninja 3000. And uh, as for the whole group, you can always contact the group at comments at lazytechguys.com. Call us at 707 722 5299. We are on Facebook, Twitter, feed, Google, Pinterest. Um, obviously, here on YouTube at youtube.com slash lazytechtv. It's very important. Um, many many different podcast channels. Uh, we are on iTunes. We're on the, in BlackBerry, the Zoom Store, and um, Dog Catcher. So just look for each individual cast. So if you're looking for Wireless Weekly, type in Wireless Weekly. If you're looking for the LTG Show, look for the LTG Show. And we've been able to separate it since then. We'd like to take this uh, moment to thank our two sponsors. Uh, first and foremost, which is Audible.com. They have that free trial, so go to audibletrial.com forward slash lazy for a free audiobook and free 30-day download. And Dine, Dine.com. Uh, they are the number one place to get uh, reliable DNS service and as their motto is, uptime is the bottom line. And they have a one full promo going on at dine.com slash podcast30. And that's dine.com podcast30. Gentlemen, thank you again. I appreciate it. And for all you out there, have a good night. Take care.